What up, though, Pistons fans? Welcome back to another episode with your boy Deuce. Let's get straight to this game tonight, man. The Pistons avenged their loss to the Phoenix Suns in their last preseason game by blowing them out tonight, 109 to 91. The Pistons really controlled this game, man, from beginning to end, from wire to wire. Um, they went up by as many as, I think, about 23, 24 points in this game when all the starters on both sides were still in this game. So, initial thoughts, right? Okay, so Devin Booker. Devin Booker was out tonight for Phoenix with ankle soreness. And Bobby Clinton was out for the Pistons again tonight with that right calf contusion. I'm really hoping we get a chance to see him sometime in this preseason. I think everybody's anxious to see him with the rest of the squad after what we all saw him do in Summer League. Also, Jalen Duran looked to have tweaked his ankle either late in the first half or early in the second half, and he did not return. Here's to hoping that it's not serious and that it's just a precaution. Injuries really have derailed his growth in his young career, so we got to keep an eye on that for sure. But hoping for the best. So the Pistons came out this game tonight hot, man. They dropped a 40 ball in the first quarter. They shot 67% from the field and 40% from three. And the story of this night was Kay Cunningham and Tobias Harris, man. They led the offense, especially in that first quarter. They combined for 12 of 13 shooting, lights out. The Pistons played with more attention tonight too. They were a lot more in sync offensively and that's important because for a young team that has so many new potential rotational pieces, the more reps you can get, the better. And you can really just see they're slowly starting to develop that chemistry. And that's part of what preseason is about, right? Just to get a different look at rotations, seeing which combinations work best, and then also just getting in those reps. So let's look at a few guys tonight. Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris made his debut and he came out firing. He scored the first seven points for the Pistons and he finished with 22 points, five rebounds, three assists, two steals and a block in 27 minutes. So he really stuffed the stat sheet tonight. And he played great, but it wasn't just the stat sheet, though. It was the scoring threat that he brings. He's going to take a lot of pressure off guys like Cade and Jaden. Just him being a consistent scoring threat on the court, along with the spacing that the Pistons now have, is going to make life so much easier for them. And you can already see the effect of him just being on the floor with those guys. He also had a nice alley-oop lob to JD. And through three preseason games, we've seen that lob connection with Jalen Duran with Cade. Jaden and now Tobias Harris tonight. So that just tells me that JD is going to eat a lot off that pick and roll offense this season, regardless of who's initiating the action. Let's get to Kay Cunningham. He was cooking tonight, man. He played his best game by far tonight, and it's so refreshing just to see him getting to whatever he wants to get to. He finished with a near triple double. He had 25 points, 12 rebounds, 9 assists, and 2 steals on 62% shooting in 30 minutes. Kay was hooping tonight, y'all. He had the midi game working, and he was even knocking it down from deep. We saw it last season, but his mid-range game is going to be crucial for him this season. I think it's going to be his bread and butter. And here's the thing about that. Defenses would rather give that up than anything at the rim. So the big man defender is going to be dropping more times than not. And with now more shooters around him, the defense is going to have to stay home, which leaves space in the mid-range for Kade to go to work. And he did tonight. We're going to see that all season long. And because Kade is so good at anticipating what defenses are going to do, he was able to find a rolling Jalen Duran and the defense, instead of dropping off Kate because he'd already got that midi going, they then pressed up, which left Jalen Duran wide open underneath the rim for a dunk. And so this season, defenses are going to have to make a decision in those situations because if the big man is dropping and attaches to Jalen Duran, then Kate can get to whatever he wants. But if the big presses up on him, then somebody's going to have to be open which is gonna leave either JD under the rim or an open shooter. If that defender then tries to help the helper by rolling to defend JD under the basket, and that's when spacers like Beasley, Fontecchio, Tobias Harris, etc., are gonna be open, depending on which ball swing creates the best shot. Bottom line though, that all starts with Cade making that read off that first pick and roll action. And he's gonna make the right read more times than not. We also saw Cade operating out of the post a lot in this game too, which isn't new to him. He played power forward in middle school growing up, so he really understands how to play big, in large part from playing against his big brother Cannon growing up, who's a legit 6'10", and played college ball at SMU for Lay Brown. K really showed that size and strength when he isoed against KD and played bully ball on the drive on the way to an N1 finish. Great game from K tonight, man, overall. He's just getting started. Let's move on to Jaden Ivey. So Jaden Ivey had a quiet first half offensively, but he really got it going in that second half, looking for his offense. He finished with 16 points, five rebounds, two assists, and two steals on 58% shooting in 25 minutes. I want to point this out too. I've noticed that Jaden is really locking in on the defensive side of the ball more than I've seen him since he's been here. And I credit both he and Coach Bickerstaff for that. There was one play in the second quarter where it looked like he may have made a mistake defensively, and Coach Bickerstaff pulled him to the side, gave him a little insight on what went wrong, patted him on the back, 
and sent it back out there. Just that positive energy, man. Just building that confidence, instilling that confidence in your in your guy. I love to see it. That's something I did not see enough of last season. Let's get to Ron Holland. Ron Holland, man. Ron Holland is going to be an impact player for this Pistons team sooner than later. His ability to just grab the rebound off the glass and push the ball coast to coast like he did tonight, finishing with his left hand at the rim, at his size, is special. Now we all know he's got a lot of work to do on that jumper. He actually air mailed a corner three not long after that coast to coast finish. But you can live with that, right? As long as he's playing solid defense and doing the little things on both sides of the ball, you can live with that. That's fine. He's already an impact player. And as that jumper improves, he's going to be a very important piece for this team. He's got that dog in him too, man. There was a play where there was a loose ball and he and Royce O'Neal both went to the floor and they both had their hands on the ball and neither one of them would let it go. <laughs> Seriously. They wouldn't let it go for about 30 seconds. They were rumbling and tumbling all over the place, not giving an inch. And it was all a good competition, right? It didn't escalate. They had smiles on their faces. It was cool. But it was just exciting to see the edge that Ron is playing with already as a rookie. He's not coming in, trying to find his way, keeping his head down, staying out the way, finding his place. No, he's in God's faces. He's looking to prove that he belongs on the court and in this league. And I'm here for all of it. He's got that Detroit edge to him, and I love it. Tim Hardaway Jr., man. So THJ got the start tonight, but honestly, I don't think he's going to be a starter for this team. He's just too streaky of a shooter, in my opinion. Kate and Jaden, they need shooters on the floor who are consistent, that defenses are going to respect. And I feel a guy like Malik Beasley, who is a consistent 40%-ish shooter from deep, um, is the better option in that starting five for now, like he did last game. Now, we'll see what happens if and when, hopefully, Asar Thompson can return. But for now, I don't think opening night that Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be in that starting lineup. I just don't see it. I think the Pistons just need to have consistent shooting on the floor for the guards to be at their best. And I just don't have confidence in Tim Hardaway providing that every night. Something else I noticed in this game tonight, a few other things from this game too. I've said it before, but the bigs on this team are going to really allow Cade and Jaden to conserve energy on offense. And here's what I mean. Through the first three preseason games, right? I've seen Jalen Duren, Simone Fontecchio, Ron Holland, and Tobias Harris all grab the rebound and push the ball up past half court before Cade or Jaden even touch it. Now, it may not seem like much, but over the course of a game, over the course of a season, not having the ball in your hands and having to initiate offense on every single play is going to pay off at the end of games because that can be physically and mentally taxing over the course of a game to have the ball in your hands on every offensive possession. So I like that Coach Bickerstaff is allowing the bigs to do that at times because it's going to help keep the guards fresher at the end of games. Now, I know it's preseason, right? But the more I see from this young team filled with energy, athleticism, improved shooting and now better in leadership and on top of that a coach at the helm who seems to be fully invested and has a true vision for what this team wants to do i'm definitely sticking by my prediction for the pistons winning 30 plus games a season this team is playing with a huge chip you can see it they got something to prove and they know it they won their race last season as much as we do as fans it's funny because the phoenix commentators felt the same way by the third quarter of this game they said that this pistons team can easily double their win total and that they could win 35 plus games this season which is exactly what i've been saying over and over again for weeks i said it before and i'll say it again last season should not be used as a barometer for what to expect this season for a ton of reasons that i've already addressed and frankly y'all i just don't have the energy tonight to do it again but what did you see that i missed let me know in the comments and let's talk about it y'all know i'm good for it so that's a wrap for tonight the pistons get their get back against the phoenix suns on the road 109 to 91 to improve the two and one on the preseason with three games remaining the next game comes against the golden state warriors tomorrow night on the road at 8 30 and i'll see you right back here post game appreciate you hanging with your boy and until next time detroit versus everybody peace TV in Y2K. You don't want to see bust up Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they keep we working? Cause I'm a passion. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that put around. Electrifying through the air, I did try shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's in the scene.